I'm gonna have to use that one. <laughs> but uh, so, 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 go <laughs> <laughs> so going going back into, I want to I want to kind of touch back on uh, Project MQ for a second. So say I'm an indie designer. Uh, I have a small business. I'm in the space. How do I get in contact with you guys and kind of get 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 on the on the engine and and so I can get discovered by uh, the the thousands of players that you already have on your platform. It's a great question, man, and it's interesting. And unfortunately, the answer is you can't anymore. Um, at the end of last year, we made a really tough decision after nearly seven years of building the platform that it wasn't scalable without us being able to put full-time resources behind it. You know, for seven years, we bootstrapped it with the salaries from our day jobs, which means like many independent game developers, ironically, we work nine to five jobs and on nights and weekends, we add another 20 hours a week into building this platform. What we recognized is even though we had scaled it to 40 countries around the world and curated 100 games, uh, and one of those games, as an example, won the best action game of the year award in 2018, um, Dead Cells, you may have heard of it. Yeah. Um, even though we were able to do that, it we didn't we still needed full-time resources to generate enough revenue to cover a indie game search engine operating in 40 countries around the world. And because we couldn't, we had to shut down the site. So to answer your question finally is have them send their information to us. We will get them plugged in to the community and send them resources we've already made. But in terms of the website, it's, it's basically shut down until further notice. We just don't have the bandwidth and we don't have the funding to maintain that piece of it, unfortunately. I definitely understand. And uh, like I said, man, I, I I don't think it's quite over with yet for you guys, man. I, I, I know it was genius. Uh, we cover we cover TAG, which is Tampa Association of, of Gaming. Uh, I know you're also a member of uh, Black Chain Game Alliance. Can you kind of go into that? whole spill and, and what what Black Chain Game Alliance is all about? Sure. It's, it's based out of Europe primarily, um, and most of the members are in Europe. It was created there, and it's about creating awareness for blockchain games, and what they also do is focus on building standards, like what are the protocols and structures and best practices for building blockchain games, to learn how to build blockchain games, where do you promote blockchain games, and and I'm just a regular member there, so unfortunately I can't speak at a, uh, a more strategic level about everything that they offer. I'm just speaking from my membership experience with them over the last year. But I, mm -hmm. I think that's important because I think probably in 10 years from now, you won't be saying blockchain gaming. It will just be gaming, just like you know, mobile gaming is gaming and PC gaming is gaming and, and console and VR gaming is gaming. It, it'll be the same thing. The difference is when you play blockchain games, you get a reward for you investing your time in the game. And you don't get that right now with non-blockchain games. You're right. You're right. And I and, and to go back to your comments, you know, when you start talking about K through twelve, I think blockchain is like that's like home for that, that, that type of gameplay. Um and what what do you look towards like is like towards the future of black chain and getting involved with K through 12 and then collegiate where, where do you see that going? I would love to hear that. My vision is that we use video games to introduce blockchain to kids, you know, K through 12 higher ed, just like my brother and I use video games uh, to introduce kids to programming last summer in partnership with junior achievement of Tampa Bay and with Ellis Williams, who was uh, on the, the 2004 Tampa Bay Buccaneers team when they won the Super Bowl, um, we partnered together to augment Junior Achievement's existing Steam Camp with a, a game development program where we use video games to teach kids how to make games. And in the process, they learn how to code because, again, you have to write code to build games. So I want to do the same thing with blockchain gaming. Use blockchain games to introduce the concepts of digital currencies and digital items and, and crypto, uh, so cryptography rather, cryptography and encryption, and then help them build their own crypto or blockchain games and create crypto. So now they're starting to use it in their regular lives and it becomes second nature to them and they can start building 
solutions both in blockchain gaming and outside of gaming but using blockchain. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Uh, You're talking about um, just basic, you know, uh, communication skills, you know, team building, you know, um, even problem solving in the game and outside of the game because you're doing both ends of it. You're, you're also playing and coding. So, yeah, I totally get it, man. I think I think that's an amazing concept. I love to see that happen. And um, I know you have a new role uh, as an advisor at Game Credits. You want to talk about that for a little, little bit? Yes, yeah, man. Uh, game Credits, I'm really excited about this opportunity. It's actually the world's first gaming cryptocurrency they launched in 23rd sorry 2014 february um blockchain bitcoin which introduced blockchain or, and is built by blockchain launched in january 3rd in 2009 uh quit to delay january 3rd is my birthday but six years later five years later um, game credits launched in 2014 and what they're doing is creating that infrastructure to power games the same way the internet powers games and again, the, the goal is to give people uh, rewards for doing things they're already doing, like playing video games, but to also give them the ability to have real ownership of their digital items. For example, um, let's say you're playing Madden, right? And you get some, some gear or whatever you get for playing that game, and you're, play, you're paying a subscription to EA to play that game. If you stop play, paying that subscription to EA, you lose access to the game, and you lose access to your digital items, right? All your rewards, trophies, all of that. Right. If, mm-hmm. Hypothetically, if if that game was on game credits or some other blockchain cryptocurrency, you would retain ownership of those digital items and rewards even if you no longer had access to the game. And because you now own it, you can either trade it to other players, potentially transfer it to the next version, the next uh, released of Madden, or even sell it to other people. That's what the blockchain allows in gaming. And, it, and you know, it, and for 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 the people that are listening, man, what he just described was a way to not only uh, trade, you know, virtual coin, but to trade your digital uh, rewards that you get on multiple games with different people. So kind of like a market, right, Mark? Exactly like a marketplace. Imagine if you were playing, um, let's say, Forza. This is an example. This doesn't exist. But if you're playing Forza and and Forza, you got some new uh, paint or some new car, and because it was on the blockchain, the next time you opened up Mario Kart, you could race Mario Kart with your new Forza car. That that doesn't exist right now, right? I'm not saying it will happen in the future, mm-hmm. but that's what the, the technology would allow. Yeah. And so, like, my my question on that man, because I you know I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I know everything, but is this this is just a impromptu question. It's not even in my notes. So let's what what's what would happen from from like a, a EA standpoint, uh, any major developer in any game, what would happen ha- have to happen on the legal side for to make that happen to make that a reality? they would need to adjust their terms of service to allow it. And then it's not at that point, it's not illegal. It's a technical implementation, you know, just the, the almost exact same thing as like crossplay, right? I mean, you've been yeah. in the game a while. Like I have, you know, that really up until Fortnite launched crossplay between games didn't happen. It didn't right? happen at all. Or, uh, yeah. Fortnite, Rocket, Rocket League did that. Um, right. And, and it wasn't because it wasn't technically possible. The companies just made a business decision not to implement the technology to allow it. Mhm. Yeah, but it just it just makes sense, man. You know, to to take chain, you know, uh, idea situation and just create something where, you know, um, if let, let's say I'm not playing Madden anymore that year, and I have a I have a friend that's you know I have a friend named Marcus that's in Tampa. I should be able to say, hey, Marcus, I'm going to put this on the market, man. Let's just go ahead and trade because I'm on to the next gameplay now. You know what I'm saying? It would be the ideal situation, man. So I definitely get it. And uh, we have a few more minutes left in the show. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what what you're going to do with those guys, and I'm really excited at what you're doing with TAG, man, because from a K-12 perspective, 
and uh, the partnerships y'all are able to create within TAG, uh, that's something that really caught my eye about you. And uh, I wish you the best in the future. Uh, before we go, I got to ask you, you know, it's an eSports podcast. What, what games are you playing right now, if any? <laughs> I have two toddlers. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I make sure, I, and, and this is a, a core philosophy for me about not introducing violence to, to young kids. I think violence has its place. And if you heard me on the debate a few weeks ago, I said that, but I don't believe it needs to be displayed in front of kids, played or seen. So right. what we're playing a lot of is Cars 2. <laughs> which is surprisingly <laughs> competitive. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man, yeah. And I definitely agree with you, man. Age-appropriate games are, are real important for me, too, man. I'm a father as well, and I totally get it, man. And uh, before we get ready to get out of here, man, any anything that you want to plug that you're doing, that your brother is doing, you have the open floor to do so. Um, let everybody know how they can reach out on social media, and the, the floor is yours, Marcus. For sure. Uh, appreciate you making this opportunity available first and foremost. And then anybody who wants to follow up with me can connect with me on LinkedIn, Marcus Blockchain Howard. You know, I, I accept all connection requests. I believe that I improve the quality of my network by investing in the people in the network. So always open to have a conversation there. Um, the big thing that we're working on here in TAG is the Super Bowl is coming here to Tampa Bay next year. And we're looking to create a one of a kind STEM gaming and esports experience here for Tampa Bay that has never been done before. Bigger than what happened in Miami last year or earlier this year at the Super Bowl. Bigger than what anyone else has done. Uh, you know, imagine DreamHack with Steam components to it, like actual educational opportunities around it. So you and I can talk about that later. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. For sure, Tencent Games is on board. Uh, you know, they're the, eighth, the ninth largest company in the world and the largest gaming company in the world. They're going to be partnering with us on the independent game developer side. So we're, we're building the rest of it. We don't have it all finalized yet, but what we've got, the vision we have for this is region-wide. So we're excited to work on that. And, and definitely awesome. interested to partner with you, anybody you want, you want to bring to the table if you want to be a part of that. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm, I'm, I'm in the region, man. We're in Louisiana. So, you know, we're, we're, we're down the street, and we can definitely make that happen, man. And like I said, man, thank you for taking out the time, man. Hug, hug, hug your toddlers for me and, and keep doing what you're doing, Marcus. Thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. This was another episode of Go Play Esports with Christopher Turner. Follow him on Twitter at Turner underscore CP. 